Welcome to my Let's Play of Spelunky. This is episode 14, and I'm Psychedelic Eyeball. Well, we went through pretty much every single character that we had at our disposal, so I figure for this one update, we might as well go all the way back to the classics. This guy is coming out of retirement, and hopefully is coming back into the action will be done in a big way. Because now that we've finally done the side quest of unlocking the temple shortcut that we're never gonna use because, as I've previously said, using the shortcuts, except for practicing certain parts of the game, are not really useful outside of that because you're not really gonna accomplish anything that will allow you to get a whole lot of money, and finally you're gonna miss all of the big items that you may end up getting inside the mines. So that's pretty much the, s the reason why I'm going out of my way to go back to the beginning of the game in every single one of these updates. And we figure that we still should leave all of these portions in because you never really know what happens in the mines and sometimes you can still die in the mines. I mean, there's a whole bunch of playthroughs that I've done and you've seen at the ending of some of these videos that sometime I will happen to die in the mines, so don't act as if, well, every single one of my... Every single one of my playthroughs in this game has been a success because, as you've just seen, it's clearly not the case. Honestly, that's one of the nice things about this game. There's no portions in this game that can be pretty much disposable and that you have to outright ignore in order to have a good playthrough of this game. So essentially, you do need to focus and make sure that every single bit is done right. I mean, just because that you did right in the mine doesn't necessarily mean that for the rest of the game you will be okay because you might have a jetpack, a shotgun, as well the 9000 million of health, but you never know when, you know, a monkey will just knock you around and you end up falling into spikes, killing you instantly, so that's kind of the beauty of thing. Nothing is acquired in this game, you gotta work for every single thing that you do. So our goal for this one update will be to reach the secret ending of this game. Now that we've done everything that needed to be done prior of this, we just need to get the Ankh again, kill ourselves in the level with the Moai statue in order to get the Edget, and then we're gonna have to combine the Edget and the Scepter that you find from Anubis in order to be able to successfully enter the next location, which is crucial, in order to go to our next stop. And yeah, good luck blowing your way through these walls without using paste and without using multiple bombs in the process. This is one of the really bad things of this game, but you still gotta get good at it because you never really know when you'll need it. This is pretty much a kind of thing that will make you appreciate the paste a whole lot more because then you see how many bombs you could have spared by go going through all of the things, but you never really know because sometimes you do end up making those uh, fortunate discoveries out of nowhere. For instance, the pitching glove that we just found out of nowhere for absolutely no reason. Oh, those spinner spiders are so cute. Honestly, I really think that the only thing that they're good for is for triggering traps, because you saw that there was this one arrow trap which shot ahead of its time and there was the arrow down. Well, that was the spinner spider which triggered it by going up and down for no real good reason. So kudos to you for being useless and armless. It's like... The regular spiders are more threatening than this because they're far less predictable and they have definitely more of a drive to attack you as opposed to the spinner spiders which just go up and down. Honestly, this is one of the additions of Spelunky that I don't really get because it's really not as if it's a dangerous enemy or that it adds anything purposeful to the game. I mean, I really like most of the changes that have been done in this game and overall, but the Spinner Spider is one of those changes that I really don't get in overall. It... I just don't understand what it does in here. I mean, it's just not an interesting enemy compared to, say, the Scorpion, which is a pretty good intermediate between, like, the Cavemen and the other enemies in the mine that end up dying in only one hit. And finally, they can be pretty nasty whenever they feel like doing so. 
honestly, one of the first things that you probably will end up buying in shops in this game will be a box of bombs. I mean, it's $10,000 if you find it in the first level, because as you might have seen in this game, the prices in stores keep increasing the more you progress to the game, as in, the base value of the item is increased by 10% on every single level that you play, so... Usually, it's a great idea to start your playthrough in the mines because then the items are at their cheapest, as opposed to like the jungle where the items will already cost like 30% more money than they would at the beginning portion of the game, so yeah, all in all, you gotta spend your early money while you can, but you still gotta be careful enough to make it so that you will have enough money for the Ankh, Otherwise, you better get ready to go guns blazing in the black market. It's always a round of fun for everybody. Welcome to the jungle. We've got fun and games, and we've got a whole lot of money. In fact, one of the things that you probably have noticed is that, well, the money amount increases as you go through different levels into the game, as in whenever you change to a brand new location. The, the amount that you get out of the gold pickups in the game increase by 25% whenever you enter a new location, so in some way this can help counterbalance the fact that the items keep costing more and more money as you progress through the game. But honestly, apart from the jungle, you're not really gonna buy that more items anymore. I mean, when you'll get to the ice caves and the jungle, you will be lucky if you even see any items anymore in the game. Okay, I figure that this little lady here will go to the work, but... I'm not gonna follow because, as I've previously told, you will not be able to get the Ankh or go to the black market because you cannot make it spawn inside the worm of the jungle, and to head further things up, well, once you get out of the worm, you get dumped on level 2-4, so therefore you will never be able to make the black market appear. Which is kind of a shame, because I've never really been able to properly showcase the the worm that is in the jungle. I mean, the architecture is pretty much exactly the same, but you will end up seeing the enemies of the jungle instead, as well than having a lot of vines infested with monkeys. But I figure we'll get all the way back to there eventually. I mean, once I'll be done going through the secret ending of this game, I'm gonna make another update where I just showcase... For instance, that monkeys can just not leave you alone and... Okay... Jesus Christ, will that monkey leave me alone? God damn, that one monkey was voracious. And yeah, you've been able to also see that when you leave them the chance, they can steal bombs from you and also they will be ignited. Which is quite a change from the monkeys that you ended up seeing in the original Spelunky, because if they stole bombs from you, at least they, you could pick them up and put them back in your inventory, but here they somehow managed to light them. Yeah, how they do that, I have no clue. Ah, god damn it! Leave my money alone, you son of a bitch! Wow, right now I'm being upset about fucking monkeys. What the hell is going on into this one update? The biggest enemy of mankind, monkey. They were attracted by our gold, and next they will be here for our souls. I guess that by my gloomy movie idea, we just ended up having a dead or restless level. And we might as well just go our black market going and see if there's any other gold pickups that we may end up having to get. Unfortunately, it seems as if we will only be able to get to the black market, uh, not the black market, but I mean the haunted castle another day, because I still want to showcase that, well, you can indeed kill the black knight and do something of value with his shield, but you cannot say no to $500,000. Uh, okay, uh, I don't really think that the crown is that valuable, but okay, at least now there's some proper money at our disposal, as well as a shotgun, so I guess I'll be set up until at least the moment where I'll have to kill myself, because then I will have to lose a shotgun, unfortunately. 
In the original Spelunky, it was possible to actually keep your items, supposedly, because all that you could do in order to get the items or bring your items to another level once you had the Ankh and everything was just to kill yourself by using the menu screen and... Okay, that is always too good to do. But yeah, you could just kill yourself and then by using this glitch because respawning in this game was pretty much instantaneous as opposed to taking a few seconds of your time, you could respawn inside the Moai statue with the item that you needed. So here we go, we will be able to buy the Ankh and at the same time we will be able to... Yeah, to buy three slaves, I guess. Yep, that's totally a good idea. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, no, because I'm genuinely trying to win until this one update. But, I don't know, will that be something I shall end up doing in the future? A gimmick update where I just bring a whole lot of lackeys all over the place and try to do something with them? That might be something worth investigating. Now, the bad news, I just scored around the shops a whole lot and there's no bomb paste anywhere, so we're gonna have to deal with plain old regular bombs, and as you probably will see later, this may end up backfiring against us big time, but it's not really as if we have a choice, so we're just gonna pick up all of the bombs that we can get and we're gonna rain the apocalypse of bomb on every single face in the world. It's kind of a shame that I don't have any pace for my bombs, because otherwise my loadout in overhaul is pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty much having... Uh, okay, I'm not gonna risk anything, and I'm just gonna make sure that, well, the man-eating plant doesn't come back to its senses while in my arms, because you probably have an idea of what will happen if it happens. And it involves you being eaten very slowly and very painfully. I don't know why, but every single time I see something bouncing on all of these springs, I always get nervous. Even whenever it's money and that it cannot really do anything toward you, but you had an idea in one of the earlier updates that things that are bouncing on springs can indeed be very deadly and hello freeze ray that came out of nowhere. I'd bring it along just for the theme of the place, but... At this point, it doesn't matter what I bring in the next level, because the only thing that will happen will be imminent doom. Regarding me and hopefully not this dog, okay, that's good. You don't go walk on that little mine. Oh, you little good god, you goody. Good, good, good doggy. Okay, I think I'm starting to reach the point in the LP where I don't necessarily know what to say about the game anymore, but... We'll deal with it at least for this one update, and I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be the last video that I do on my lonesome. Lest that I resort to just narrating every single thing that happens on the screen. I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm jumping, a mine is blowing up, I'm gonna pick up this uh, this chest, here there's money, I'm picking up the yeti, I'm gonna throw him, at, oh god, there's something exploding, oh my goodness! Yep, we've gotten to that point, folks. Okay, or maybe not. So, anyway... Oh yeah, that's right, I am missing one thing in this one playthrough in order to truly go the distance. I absolutely need a capella of my own in order to be able to get some free blood and free... Oh, okay. Well, I was gonna lose that shotgun on the next level anyway, but it still kinda sucks that I ended up losing it this way because I still could've had a plan in using it in some way. Or, well, maybe not, because honestly, you don't really need the shotgun as badly as you need it in the original game, because while in the original game, it was pretty suicidal to fight UFOs up close because they will just pretty much fall right on your face and explode, as opposed to this remake, which makes it so that whenever you knock UFOs around, at least they are knocked all over the place, which... Okay, once again, a free freeze ray out of nowhere. Thanks a lot, game. But yeah, the main difference between Spelunky Classic and this one was that the Yetis had a million more hit points compared to this one version. And Alright, Kepler problem solved. Now we probably have all that we need in order to truly go far in this game. More so considering that we've gotten to the point where we can finally get to the statue. It 
it always pays off to explore the level further, just in order to make sure that you collected everything, and just in order to figure out a creative way to end up killing yourself. You always gotta do that. So, Toe wasn't anything much of value in the last level, but hopefully things will change a little bit here. Oh hey, the mothership, I totally should go to it. Nah, I'm just kidding. Considering our track record for it, I'm gonna avoid the mothership unless that I have a really good reason to go to it. And right now, this is not really an occasion where I want to go to the mothership. Normally, you'll want to go there in order to get the alien blaster or the plasma cannon, because I always keep miscalling this item the wrong name, but... Yeah, the main reason why anyone will just go to the to the mothership will just be to get the plasma cannon and nuke everything in sight and all of the upcoming levels, but right now it's not gonna happen, so I'm gonna blow all my money on bombs and holy shit things are gonna blow up. The main reason that bringing the alien blaster along for a hell run will be a pretty bad thing because now I need to keep the scepter for the next level and therefore I won't be able to bring any item and yeah right now you can see the big problem with not having any kind of sticky bombs. I don't have any means to fight this guy in a reasonable way and I don't really have the choice to use bombs and now my pitching gloves are just really fucking me up big time. I'm really not liking my situation, okay, now this is suicidal, never do that because it's a terrible idea. Okay, I can't believe I ended up winning this fight. But the only bad thing is that, well, what happened to me having a good situation in this one playthrough? Uh, yeah, I kinda forgot. Oh, sure, I would have liked having this item a few seconds ago, thanks, game. Too bad that the feeling's pretty much, uh, well, I don't really need the shotgun anymore, because now all that needs to be done is to go all the way there, and yeah. I just was making sure that this arrow trap was just gonna bounce armlessly around, because if I ended up dropping down here, there would have been a very high chance of that one arrow bouncing against the wall and outright killing me. Oh great, and now the shopkeeper is against me. I really tried to not have any attention on me, but unfortunately the scepter decided otherwise. So we're now gonna have to do things the hard way. No sticky bombs, and we're now running on the law. Now... Okay, what probably will be my only salvation now will be to kill enough enemies in order to get a couple of points of health, but at this point it's still gonna be pretty risky to do because either the enemies are scattered all over the place or they're gonna be at places where you can find them and oh god, please tell me that I didn't lose my dam- Okay, my damsel lives somehow! Uh, okay, sh does she? Okay! <laughs> I really was sweating a whole lot here for a second. I'm not really sure about the timing of this one tiki trap, but I'm glad that it's horrible, yeah. I don't care that I'm wasting bombs in order to kill flies, but I really can't afford to lose any health right now, and I have 70 or 68 bombs anyway. Okay, so I suppose we can leave that damsel to her own devices, while we go and just... Finally unlock the way toward this elusive door that will lead us to a place that we haven't been to yet. So let's see what's gonna be our prize for making... Uh, oh, uh, no! Okay. Oh, the joy of pushing the wrong buttons all the time by accident. Yep, I kinda am a fan of this. And then again, I kinda forgot that, well, you know, you just cannot pick up stuff whenever you're over one of these little ledges where ladders can sometimes end up hanging on, and holy shit, this place is shiny. Yeah, I kinda was busy soaking in the ambience of this place. So, welcome to the City of Gold. 
this entire place is made out of gold nuggets and wherever you go you will find walls that you can blow up which are made out of gold even the hazards are made out of gold the stone crusher traps or whatever are made out of gold everything is golden including your silence because nobody must know that this place exists so the whole guess of the City of Gold is that you're gonna make sure you go there with as many bombs as possible because then you can rake crazy money in this place. And in fact there's a whole lot of mummies around this one place so you can get, you can get even more savings by going to that one place. And yeah, I'm not really sure why I'm even bothering trying to bomb this mummy because hey, I have spike shoes. Normally you're not supposed to be able to stomp on a mummy but that's what Spike Shoes do, does for you. So the City of Gold has two different things going on with it uh, concerning the differences in versions. In the classical version of Spelunky, at some place during the level you just saw a giant statue that was made out of diamonds, instead you end up getting this item. This is the Book of the Dead and whenever you get it unfortunately this brings Anubis back to life and yeah he's already dead. Unfortunately, the second incarnation of Anubis is kind of lackluster. All that he does is flying through walls and summoning a whole lot of skeletons to fight you, but the really bad thing is that, well, he's not really good at doing anything which involves fighting. All that you need to do is just pick up a spot where you know Anubis will fly and just drop two bombs all the way there. Yeah, he's got as much health than his uh, predecessor, but right now I must make sure that this one... Okay, what the hell even happened there? Yeah, I better... Ah, uh, I would have needed that one shotgun really bad, but I kind of was scared to take on the shopkeeper considering that I only had two health. Oh well, this is what we're gonna have to do with in order to go to the final fight. Or is it the final fight? Because... Now that we have the Book of the Dead, something will be very different with that one fight. Okay, not that much, we cannot afford to be that melodramatic, but there's gonna be a notable difference. So the first thing that you can do whenever you either have ropes or the jetpack or just even have spring shoes because then you'll be able to do most of the jumps without having to use any items is you can go up his lair and then you can get a shit ton of items just by going all over the place. Uh, I really missed you, Sticky Bomb. This is another time where I would have liked having you so much. Okay, a machete is not really the item that I needed, but I'm certainly not going to spit on it. It may come in handy. All in all, if you can go to the top of the level, make sure you do so because there's so many items, so much gold, so much everything. In fact, I might have had another chance to have some sticky bombs here, but unfortunately, that was not a plan that was meant to happen. And might as well just use our parachute. This is what it does, by the way. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I ended up using it too, by the way. So, the one thing which is going to be different with this one fight is that you have to pay close attention to the icon of the book which is in our HUD. Right now it's currently gnawing at you and whenever you're going to a certain place, it will start gnawing faster and faster. That means that the entrance to the secret place that we're going to is right over where you are. So, in order to successfully do this fight the way you need to do it in order to get the secret ending, you must get Olmec to create a, no a large, nice hole just for you so that you'll be able to get to that place. Oh god, I hate it whenever monkeys just decide to take refuge on Olmec's head like that. You never know whenever they may just end up... Uh, being triggered like that and yeah whenever this happens always run away as fast as possible from Olmec because if you end up being knocked unconscious by the monkey then unfortunately your adventure is gonna come to a very messy end. And for this fight I always tend to do it pretty conservatively. Honestly unless that I'm going for a speedrun or whatever I just end up doing the fight by making such a large hole because whenever Holmec end up spawning a shit ton of enemies like this, then it becomes far easier to deal with them in a way so that you will not be cluttered with every single one of them in a tiny hole. You gotta be able to go everywhere that you want during this one fight. 
And finally, having extra room in order to avoid all max stomp is always a plus. More so considering that I replayed the classic version lately and it turns out that his jumps in this one version of the game are far wider than the original, so he's far harder to deal with this time around. Also, I really gotta say, from all of the enemies that Olmec can spawn at you, the Cobras are by far the worst. Having an enemy that can just knock you back on command with their basic attack is kind of overkill. You really gotta be careful whenever it comes to that. And yeah, whenever the hole is getting like 3 blocks wide, it can no longer jump over hit. So, if you want to get him to climb all the way back up, you gotta give him some hill. So, right now you can see what our goal is. We need to get into this one door which is just over the lava. Now that we have the Book of Dead, this door is now open. If you don't have the Book of Dead, you can still find this door, but it will be locked and you won't be able to enter it. So, the plan here is to make it so that Olmec will die just over here because what we're gonna have to do is to ride on Olmec's head and then we will be able to get inside the door because there's no ledge that will allow you to get to that place. Also, I really am thankful for the Capillo right now because I'm earning a few valuable hit points out of the deal by just getting all of those little uh, droplets of blood to cut to go into my cup and making it so that my health is refilled. I'm pretty sure that if it wasn't for it, I would have died at this point. And that's it, goodbye Holmec, and hello new secret place that we have yet to explore. And oh boy, I'm really not getting... I'm not feeling too good about this new place. Yep. Welcome to the final location of the game, Hell. This is pretty much where everything comes to an end, where all of the worst hazards of the game have been kept in store here for you, and there's a whole lot of nasty new enemies and baddies and obstacles all over the place, this devil being one of them. I'm knocking him here with this one treasure chest because if I tried to go over him, he would have tried to stomp me. And we have another new enemy here, the Succubus. Essentially, they just pause as damsels, and whenever you get close to them, they try to climb on your back to suck your health. Definitely not pleasant. So, the first level of hell always have this one little distinct area that has this one tower with this different looking vampire on it. This is Vlad the Impaler, or Dracula as you might want it, and he's the king of vampires, and right now he's dead. Unfortunately, he's just a vampire that has more health, and now... Okay, that was a pretty horrible way to go. So, yeah, our first journey in hell really wasn't a success, wasn't it? Yeah, honestly, I'm kinda embarrassed that it had to end with this, but... We can't really choose the way that we die into this game all of the time. Usually, accidents make and break this game. Oh well, maybe next time. Now that we've seen what the true hell is, we're gonna have some more hell by looking at the chronicles of our past lives. So yeah, I was just juggling with a whole lot of different characters and... Yeah, honestly, when I was talking about how come the mines could just kill you, well, this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. A perfectly normal playthrough that you think go well and everything goes wrong. And right now, you're gonna see an attempt of stealing with a camera, but stop picking up the camera, I want a shotgun already. And right here, if you want a pretty creative way to die, you've got one right here. Throwing stuff at these boxes will kill you. And yes, that's a really stupid death, but what can I do about it? So, we'll meet back next time, and let's see if we can get to hell again.